Hi, I'm Jim Farrell, Mayor of Federal Way. It is my pleasure to present to you the pilot episode of Mission Community Nutrition. This is a 12-part series, each episode 30 minutes in length. With this series, we hope to increase public understanding of food preparation and nutrition. We also want to provide a template for an improved quality of life, specifically aimed at a reduction in childhood obesity. Additionally, we want to raise the level of public awareness of traditional and indigenous food movement in our community and continue to increase interest in community health. The shows will present a variety of relevant topics in the effort to serve the community through shared knowledge and insight from local experts. Examples of shows include Washington, Geography of Food, We Are What We Eat, Food for Pleasure, Vitality and Health, Healing Foods, Native American Foods and Health, and A Mother's Nutrition Nightmare, Kids and Foods, concluding with A Family Dinner in 20 Minutes, Myth or Fact. So join me as we learn about preparation and serving a nutritious and inexpensive meal for ourselves, our family, and our friends. We hope you enjoy this series, and here's to good health Federal White. Thank you. Hello, my name is Autumn Gresset, and I will be your host for Mission Community Nutrition. We are so excited to have you join us today. On today's episode, we will be making a quick tomato sauce, delicious eggplant parmesan, zesty tomato meat sauce, and a variety of noodles. Now, let's make our way into the kitchen to join our chef. It is my honor to introduce to you our chef, Scott Franklin. Scott is executive chef of the Dumas Bay Center in Federal Way. He will prepare and create the healthy and amazing menu items for today's and future shows. Thank you, Autumn. I am so excited to be here today to prepare these delicious and easy meals. Um, let's get the ball rolling with our quick and easy tomato sauce. Today's first menu item is a quick tomato sauce, not the kind that comes out of a jar or a can. While there are many variations of tomato sauce that all have their own unique flavors, some take longer than others. Today's sauce will take about six minutes and can be used immediately or be stored in the freezer for later use. So this recipe and all of our recipes in this series can be found on the website www.nutritiouscommunity.com. So for our tomato sauce recipe, I'm quadrupling the recipe today, so I'm gonna do four times what it says on the website. So we start with a high temperature, good fat. So today we're gonna to use avocado oil. Um, let's talk for just a minute about fats. We've been told most of our lives that extra virgin olive oil is the best oil that we can use and it is very nutritious. However, extra virgin olive oil is not a high temp oil. So whenever you're cooking with an oil, you wanna be sure that you have a really good quality oil that can be used at high temperatures. So today we're gonna to try avocado oil. And I'm going to add garlic and onions to this and we are going to saute it for just a few minutes. Well, that's easy. All the ingredients can easily be found in your local farmer's market or grocery store. Scott, I see that you have chopped garlic over there. Is minced garlic a substitute that they could use for this? There are a lot of substitutions that can be made in this sauce. Um, as you can see, I got a, different, a bunch of different types of tomatoes. We can use canned tomatoes, we can use fresh tomatoes from the farmer's market, we can use diced tomatoes, we can use um, stewed tomatoes, just any different number of type of tomatoes that you can find, the more that you put in here, the more complex the sauce is gonna end up. So now I have all the ingredients in my sauce. I've added Italian seasoning, I've added salt, pepper, um, red chili flakes. Uh, now, in the real world, I would cook this for about an hour. It's ready to go right now. You can use it in a lot of different things, but the longer you cook it, the more consistent your flavors are going to be and the more pureed your product is going to be. So if in later episodes when we turn this into a pizza sauce, we'll want it to be a little more consistent so that'll require cooking it a little more. But this sauce is definitely ready to taste. That's part of the process is cook for a little bit and then we taste. But right now we are going to add my secret ingredient. And this is one that most people won't ever be able to guess but it makes such a good little contrast to your sauce. My secret ingredient is lemon zest. It's 
So I'm just going to add the zest of a little bit of lemon. This is just a grater. You can do this with a lot of different things. You can do it with a zester, you can do it with a grater. But it's just going to add that little bit of zing to it that's going to make this sauce stand out from all the rest of them. Wow, Scott, that really was easy. I can't wait to use this in our next recipe. The next item on our menu today is going to be eggplant parmesan. The recipe makes about six servings and will take approximately an hour to make. Scott, what are the ingredients for today's dish? So for this recipe, we start with really good organic eggplants. Um, we're going to bread them, so you'll get to use your choice of breading. The one that I like is uh, actually just Kellogg's Corn Flakes, and it's processed in a food processor, and it makes for a really nice, a little bit sweet um, coating for the outside. But there's all kinds of things that you can use for breading. We'll need some eggs, which I've just whipped up some whole eggs in here for the breading process, and we're going to need some salt. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is to teach you guys about the salt leaching process. Scott, I've heard that rumor. What does it really take to leach out all the oils? So growing up, I never liked eggplant very much. Um, but I finally figured out as a chef how to make it where it always tastes good. And eggplant has an oil inside it that's very bitter when you cook it. So the trick is to leach all that oil out of the inside of the eggplant. And this is how you do it. You start by trimming all the green off the eggplant. Then you're going to make a small slice so you can have a very smooth surface to start from, and then you're going to make your slices. So I'm making mine fairly thick because I, I want them to hold up to the cheese and the sauce and the pasta in the very end, but that's what you're going to end up with. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the sink where I'm going to use salt to leach all the bitter oil out of this eggplant. Okay, so we take our eggplant, and what we're going to do is we're going to pour a lot of salt on this and it's going to look very crazy to most people because you're going to think why would I want that much salt? We're going to rinse all of this off in the end but right now all this salt is going to take all that moisture out of the inside of the eggplant and with that moisture that bitter oil is going to come with it. So we're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. We're going to turn them over we're going to coat them with salt again, let them sit another 15 minutes, and then when that's done, we're going to take them, we're going to rinse them off, and then we're going to pat them dry, and we're going to end up with something that looks just like this. Now we take our rinsed eggplant, and we're going to bread it. So we start with the egg, just dip it and get it wet, and then I keep a dry hand, I take it out of the egg, I dip it in my cornflake breading, I put some on top, I give it just a little bit of pat down, I flip the whole thing over, pat it down again, and I have a breaded eggplant. So I repeat the process with all of it, and if you keep a wet hand and a dry hand, things won't gum up on you, and they'll all be very even and taste very, very good. So next, we're going to saute these and get a nice caramelized, crisp, outer crust on them and then we're going to bake them in the oven and then we're going to be done. So for this I'm using a little bit of grass-fed butter and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of coconut oil so I get a good buttery flavor and there'll be a little bit of sweetness with the coconut oil and it tastes really really good in contrast with this eggplant. So a little butter, we'll go with a little coconut oil and then we're going to warm all this up and start sauteing our eggplant. Wow, that wasn't hard. Scott, what do you suggest we add to complete the dish? So now we have our breaded eggplant parmesan and we've browned it on both sides in a combination of grass-fed butter and coconut oil. I have taken it and I've added a generous helping of a four cheese blend that I'm using today. The cheeses that I'm using today are Parmesan, uh, Asiago, Fontina, and Provolone. You can use whatever cheese you like. Um, I like Parmesan because it has a good hard crunch to it and a good salty flavor and provolone gives you that stringy sensation that everyone loves from cheese. 
If you would like to make this a vegan dish, you could use a cheese substitute. The one that I like is a mozzarella cheese made from almonds. And it's very good, it tastes very similar to mozzarella, and it is a great dairy-free cheese substitute. So now, I'm going to take our eggplant parmesan, I'm gonna cook it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Voila. It smells amazing. That quick tomato sauce is going to come in handy in so many recipes, like up next in our zesty tomato meat sauce. The next dish is a variation on our initial tomato sauce, only this time it becomes a zesty tomato meat sauce. It will take about 20 minutes to make and makes approximately six servings. Scott, what ingredients do we need for this dish? For this recipe, we're gonna start with our fantastic tomato sauce that we just made, and we're gonna add grass-fed ground beef, we're gonna add chopped garlic, onions, whole Italian seasoning, garlic pepper, salt, and we're gonna cook it all in a little bit of wonderful avocado oil. So here we go. We're gonna start with sauteing the garlic. Add the onions. We're gonna stir these and cook them until the onions and the garlic are translucent. We'll be able to turn a little clear and soften up just a little bit. So this is one great recipe that we can take our, our tomato sauce that we just made and make it into a complete different dinner. This meat sauce is great on spaghetti. It's basically your traditional spaghetti meat sauce, but you can also cook it in a lot of other different things. You could turn this into a lasagna. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with a great meat sauce. So now, now that we've sauteed these a little bit, we've got them a little bit clear. We're gonna cook them for just another moment. And then we're gonna add our meat so we can get that good and brown. So I always recommend grass-fed beef because it's so good for you. Um, but certainly if you have any type of ground beef, um, feel free to use it. It'll all taste amazing. Get our meat in there. So browning this with the onions and the garlic is just gonna put more flavor into every single bite that you have. So when you get any little morsel of meat out of the tomato sauce, it's gonna taste really good all by itself. And it's also going to complement the flavor of the tomato sauce itself. So now I'm gonna season this. A little Italian seasoning. A little garlic pepper. And a little bit of salt. Now we're gonna brown this up. We are, it's gonna create some oil in the process. Some of the oils are gonna release from the beef and then we're going to drain it. Then we're gonna add the tomato sauce, cook it for a little longer and we'll have this excellent meat sauce.
Our last item on today's menu is spaghetti squash noodles. Scott, what do you say? Let's get started. For this recipe, I'm going to need one spaghetti squash. I'm going to need some uh, good grass-fed butter, garlic pepper, kosher salt, and some water. Okay, we start by taking the spaghetti squash and I'm going to trim the very top off. Sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to cut, so just be really careful and just take your time with it. Sharp knives really, really, really help. We get this piece off and we throw it away. Now we're going to take the squash and we're going to cut it in half. So now we're going to take all of this inside, all of the seeds out. We're going to get some of that stringiness off right now. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to salt and pepper it. So now we're going to take some of our grass-fed butter. Just take your butter and smear it in really good and leave a pretty generous amount. We're going to take this and turn it over on a sheet tray. And now we're going to poke some holes in the outside so we can get a little steaming action. Be very careful because the skin is kind of thick. And I'm trying to go all the way through so the steam goes all the way through the squash. Last, I'm going to take some water I'm going to put it on the tray, being careful to get some underneath so it steams right up inside. And then we are going to put this into a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes. So once you remove the spaghetti squash out of the oven, give it a few moments to cool. After it cools, you're going to take a fork and just gently scrape the meat from the inside of the spaghetti squash and it comes out in something that looks a lot like spaghetti. I'm going to combine a little bit of the tomato product to it just to give it a little more flavor. And then I'm going to take it and fluff it up, put it on the plate, Put a generous amount of our quick and zesty tomato sauce over the top of that. And then take a couple of pieces of our eggplant parmesan, place them right on top. And voila, we have our dinner. Enjoy! The spaghetti squash recipe will take approximately 30 minutes to prepare. I recommend if you want to pair this with a zesty tomato meat sauce or the quick tomato sauce that you begin preparing this ahead of time. This is also a great weekend meal. As mentioned at the beginning of the show, nutritional education and providing dietary information for all of our menu items is one of our primary missions. I would like to introduce our colleague, Jessica Bean, registered dietitian with CHI Franciscan Health. Scott, thank you for showing us this quick and easy zesty tomato sauce and the eggplant parmesan. A few easy tips to remember when it comes to picking out fruits, vegetables, herbs, are that you want to go for foods that have really strong, bold colors. So the bright colors, whether it's white counts as a color, reds, orange, yellows, greens, purples, and blues, 
all the color of the rainbow. If you can eat fruits and vegetables and herbs that have those different colors, you will get the benefit of them. And so with that, when it comes to tomatoes, tomatoes are really rich in the carotene pigment, which contributes to the red, orange, yellow colors. And when you have that pigment, it's high in lycopene, Lycopene specifically is really good to protect against heart disease, to help lower bad cholesterol, to help protect your eyes, and tomatoes also have vitamin C, they also have potassium, which are great for your body, help regulate your fluids, keep your immune system strong, keep it boosted. Tomatoes are very rich in antioxidants to help protect your cells as well. So they're low in calorie, they have that bold color, flavor, and if you can continue to work those in, it will give you immeasurable health benefits. So when it comes to garlic and onions, they have that really bold white color. They have that intense flavor and intense odor that are related to the sulfur compounds. They're both rich in antioxidants and that helps protect your cells. They have natural antibiotics, so it gives that boost for your immune system. Antiviral, especially with COVID going on, help protect you against viruses, antifungal. So many health, healthy benefits of garlic and onions both. Try to work them in whenever you can. So for eggplant parmesan, when we are looking at eggplant, eggplant is a great source of fiber. Folate has potassium, vitamin C, vitamin K. It's very low in calories, so it's nutrient dense. It has that real rich blue purple color from the anthocyanin pigments and helps protect against cancer. It can help reduce blood sugar levels. So make sure that you incorporate eggplant into your diet as well. So let's talk about squash. There's different types of squash, yellow squash, crookneck squash, zucchini squash, butternut. Today we worked with spaghetti squash and squash has those carotene pigments again, similar to the tomatoes that range in color from orange, red, some of them might even be more white in color and they're rich in vitamins and minerals. So you get vitamin C from squash, you get vitamin E, which is part of that rich antioxidant to help protect your cells against cancer. It is a good source of fiber, which are those complex carbohydrates. So your blood sugar doesn't spike when you have the squash like you would with maybe rice or potatoes. Also, it's natural anti-inflammatory, so it may help with conditions such as arthritis or inflammation. It's really healthy for you, nutrient dense. We get that bold color. The flavor is relatively mild, so it pairs well with almost anything you wanna cook it with and those different herbs and seasonings. So have fun with squash and enjoy. I encourage you, have fun with these foods. Go try them out. Embrace your health journey. We're in this with you. We wanna give you things to equip you, to encourage you and empower you so that you can be your best self. I'm gonna hand it back over to Autumn and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Jessica. That was very insightful. We hope you will use today's recipes and thank you for joining us on Mission Community Nutrition. We look forward to bringing you healthy and tasty choices on future episodes. To find these recipes and more information about the show, please visit nutritiouscommunity.com. Support for Mission Community Nutrition comes from the following. Thank you. CHI Franciscan, Spectra, City of Federal Way.